The lesson today is from July the 12th, uh, 2020, and it's entitled Discipleship 101. Our objective is to grasp the essential nature of spiritual progress, to rely on the promise, promises of God, to determine to deepen our discipleship. And our key verse says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints, and do minister. Hebrews 6 and 10. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we want to thank you this morning, Lord, for all the blessings that you do bless us with each and every day. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for your guidance, for the Holy Spirit dwelling among us, Lord, uh, that we might uh, be able to learn of thee and to walk in the path that you've laid before us. We want to pray this morning, Lord, for uh, the leaders of our nation. We want to pray, pray, Lord, especially that you would guide them, Lord, in a way that we might be able to maintain our ability to worship you in truth and in spirit in the freedom of in our country that we have thus far enjoyed. We ask for your divine uh, intervention in this cause, Lord. Uh, we thank you for the abilities that we have had, and we pray, Lord, that they might continue. Uh, we ask, Lord, this morning that you would be with those less fortunate than we, those that are sick, afflicted in body, those that have lost loved ones. You know the needs of each and every one. We pray for all the members, Lord, of our own congregation, Lord, that especially you would be with them. Help them, Lord, to uh, overcome the things of this day and be able to move on in the light that you have laid before them. Uh, bless us now in this lesson. Give us the words, Lord, you would have us to speak, and we pray, Lord, for growth and understanding. Uh, in all things, we ask, Lord, that you would forgive us of our sins, and we ask it in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Uh, a move toward maturity. Jeff has spoken for the past few weeks on the need for our growth and understanding. This lesson is um, is basically geared toward that. Coming from Hebrews chapter six, um, we we learn uh, that it is God's will that we grow in His grace and knowledge, and He will give us those things that we stand in need of. You know, there comes a time in a Christian's life that he or she need to go beyond the basics and seek to grow to maturity. As we work with the youth, we attempted to grow their faith and to move them beyond their first acceptance of Jesus Christ and to seek to do His will in their life. We wanted them to realize there was a grow process and then a work to do for the Lord. We um, try to use um, simple life-changing examples to show them how to apply the Christian way that the Bible teaches. And this can be uh, true regardless of, of the age factor there. This should be basically the same desire in every believer is to grow in his grace and in his knowledge. You know, we must first accept Jesus' gift of salvation and then move on to his plan for us as an individual. We need to understand the acts of baptism and the way uh, we do this and what it stands for in the believer's life. Um, the Bible's full of examples and life-changing uh, experiences. Uh, the beginning where, whereby a believer can begin a work for the Lord, both those that they, I mean, the scripture's full of those that have prospered and those that failed. And so we can use these as examples to guide us in our Christian life. Abraham was one who accepted the challenge that God put before him. And although he failed at times, he continued to put faith in God and, and believe what God had, had called him to do. And God counted this unto him for righteousness, and he was then called the father of faith. On the other hand, we see already in, in this same story of Abraham, the life of Lot, who failed 
to believe in God like he needed to. He didn't grow. He may have believed and he taught it, but he didn't pass it on to those that he loved. It's important as we grow in in our faith that we give it to someone else, that they too might grow. And then the, the writer goes on in Hebrews to uh, also give us a warning in verses 4 through 6. We need to know that if we fail to grow in Christ, there are consequences to our actions. We will be blessed according to his word, but also not blessed if we fail to heed the instruction of his word. When we are enlightened, uh, or when it has been made known to us, uh, we are then accountable for our actions. The verse talks of having tasted, and that means to make to understand what we read. And God has supplied this uh, by and through the Holy Spirit. He's given us the Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us, and we're to follow Him, uh, or His guidance, and in the way that He leads. You know, God didn't leave us totally on our own, but um, the Holy Spirit is within each believer to guide them. He gives us understanding that we need to do the Father's will. And only a true believer can actually uh, partake of the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit cannot be received apart from salvation experience. If we've accepted him, then we have the Holy Spirit living within us to guide us. So we're speaking of a born-again believer. Now, if this believer fall away or become an, an apostate, this is a different state to backsliding. Now, backsliding is very serious and it is dangerous, but one can backslide and come back to God from such a state. But if there is no hope for the apostate to come back to God, to apostate from, it implies the entire renunciation of Christianity or going back to a state. And of course, in this particular situation of Judaism, heathenism, just outright sin, the very act of apostasy would be equivalent to crucifying Christ over again. A very dangerous situation to fall into. In verses 7 through 8, um, our God is uh, patient, long-suffering, all-merciful, and, and full of grace. It's not easy for a Christian to uh, get away from God. Uh, it must be deliberate. And willful. God will reach out to a straying Christian, oftentimes to bring them back uh, to the fold. Uh, but after an often time of rejection, totally rejecting God, God will turn one over to a reprobate mind, and that Christian uh, can commit the sin of apostasy. And he does. And then basically there's no hope for him. He cannot return to God. That is such a sad state to even think about. I'm going to read an illustration, an application here. It says, Carelessness and lack of growth in the Christian life may be the beginning seeds of the grave sin of apostasy. We should always be alert to help other Christians who begin to show these signs. We need to visit, pray, and encourage them as brothers and sisters in the Lord. It is our duty to help one another spiritually. And the illustration said, I had 500 men in my church last Sunday morning, said Dr. J.H. Joy. 500 working men. One of them has been so frequently in the police court that in our local jail there is one cell that bears his name and is always waiting for him. He was laid hold of by what we call the adult school movement. The Lord Jesus took possession of him, and I think I never heard a more beautiful testimony than one of his friends gave me concerning him. He said, you know, that man's face is changing every week. He had the face of a beast. It is lighting up, lighting up. 
like an old cathedral. And this comes from the British Weekly. Um, if a person truly turns their lives over to God and then begins to grow in his grace and knowledge, he will understand what God would have him to do by reading the Word of God. Brother Hemp Pierce used to say, the Bible is a letter from God to me. If I don't read it, it's to my own downfall. But if I read it and let it abide in my life, it will lead me to an everlasting life of hope in, in Jesus Christ in heaven. And that's what we need, how we need to apply that. Um, <clears throat> in the next portion... It encourages us to keep up the good work. Um, the writer basically gives us, shows us a confidence expressed in in uh, each one. Said he speaks to them in a more gentle nature in this section by calling them beloved or dear friends, assuring them of his confidence in them and their spiritual stature. Um, but basically wanting them to understand the possibility of them falling away and reminding them to avoid unbelief at all cost. This is such a serious thing where people can fall into unbelief. Faith is so important. And then he goes on to give us a, a diligence desired. It said, with further words of admonition and encouragement, he speaks of diligence. Now, this is strenuous endeavor to work. No man can have full assurance of hope who does not persevere in holy living. It has, our Christianity has to play out in our daily life. Now, he encourages us not to be slothful, indolent, lazy, or inactive, but to learn uh, from men and women of God who are more mature, more spiritually developed than we are. He encourages us to look to those who have appropriated God's promises, who have applied them to their lives and encouraged them in the way that they should go. It takes both faith and patience to claim fully God's promises. Um, I have another application that I think is good. It says, someone has said, works do not produce faith, but true faith does produce works. A true Christian is a fruit-bearing Christian. James says, show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. He also says that faith without works is dead, James 2 and 20. And the writer of Hebrews commends his audience for their good works, which flows out of believing hearts. Um, true believing faith in Jesus Christ will be manifest. And these are the characteristics that you can find from a true believer manifesting the works of Christ. It will be love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And the Bible says in Galatians 5 and 22, against such there is no law. What do you see in a person's life? Uh, what do you see in your own life? Is he a believer in Christ? If he is, you're going to see these characteristics flowing from him. We need to be reminded of this and there too our this these need to flow through us as well. Said a businessman crossed the ferry to New York every day. One day he spoke kindly to a little boot black who was shining his shoes. After that he noticed that the boy never saw him without wistfully approaching him. And the boy would pick up his bundles and brush off his clothes without expecting any reward. The man was so deeply impressed that one day he asked the boy what inspired him. Why, sir, he replied, the first time you met me, you called me my boy. Till then, 
I had thought I was nobody's boy. I'll do anything for you. So Christ made us know that we are not orphans in a storm, but children of the Father who knows and loves us. We have this assurance from Jesus Christ. We can place our faith and trust in him and walk in the footsteps that he has laid out. He goes on to show us that we, um, we, we need to keep up um, what God has sworn. We need to hold on to his promises. Again, we're given examples in his word of the promise he has made to believers and how those promises came to being in the lives of those who believed and kept their faith in God. Abraham permitted no outward circumstance to defeat his faith in God. Faith produces hope, and hope in turn strengthens our faith. Um, God wants to show the heirs of the promise in verses 16 through 20 that his word is fully reliable. The heirs of the promise reached out to include not just Abraham and his descendants, but the writer, his readers, and you and me. The holy place within the veil is symbolic of heaven. In the uh, last portion, it said faith and hope always go together. Um, in the New Testament, to have faith in God means to believe in him, uh, to trust in him, uh, to have real assurance that he is God. And that he will fulfill his word. Faith produces hope. Hope for the Christian includes going to be with the Lord, having a glorified body, and being in heaven forever. Hope for the Christian is genuine certainty that God will keep his word and fulfill his promise. Faith and hope. What a wonderful combination of words. Said one day John Wesley was walking with a troubled man who expressed his doubt as to the goodness of God. He said, I do not know what I shall do with all this worry and trouble. At the same moment, Wesley saw a cow looking over a stone wall. He said, Do you know, asked Wesley, what that cow is looking over the wall? Why that cow is looking over the wall? No, said the man. Who was worried, Wesley said, the cow is looking over the wall because she cannot see through it. That is what you must do with your wall of trouble. Look over it and avoid it. Faith enables us to get above circumstances and to look to Christ who is over all, blessed forever. We can we can be pulled down, torn apart from um, our troubles or we can look up and trust in the Lord and he can take care of it God didn't guarantee that we wouldn't have troubles by the wayside he didn't guarantee that we wouldn't stumble and fall he didn't guarantee that there would be nothing bad come upon us but he did guarantee that he would be with us through whatever we might face and that uh, he said that he would prepare he would make a way for us to escape and that's what we need to do we need to look to him depend upon his leadership things are going to come to us at every angle you might can dream of and some that you can't even comprehend or dream about uh, but there's where our faith and trust in god is uh tested i guess when we put our faith in him and look to him and to know what to do about a circumstance, we got to go to the Word. It's just like if I called you on the phone and asked you something, I'm waiting for a reply. But unless I hear, or if I write you a letter and then you write me one back, if I don't read it, I don't know what you've said. we got to learn to listen to the Word of God. we got to learn to read what He says. I pray this next week will be good for you and that um, you will enjoy and grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Have a good week.